Thank you so much, Kevin. This is Angie, and we would just uh, would like to say good morning and thank you so much for joining Vivi and I as we share some information with you about the Career Education 10 to 12 curriculum. Wanted to let you know just a few pieces about uh, our content for today. We're going to start with a brief overview of career education uh, at K to 12, so you can see the full picture of um, what has been created within curriculum. Then we're going to focus specifically on career ed at the secondary level, including an overview of career life development, some ideas for you on delivery models, and as was uh, prefaced, some information and criteria on capstone. A person's career is considered his or her journey through life, and it encompasses a constellation of life roles within numerous contexts that we experience throughout our lives. And for this very reason, the new career ed curriculum, it now begins in kindergarten and follows through to graduation and beyond. A few things about the new career ed curriculum, uh, it promotes a holistic view of the student it acknowledges the need to be adaptable, resilient, and flexible. All of these things so important for meeting the ever-changing opportunities and challenges that our students are going to face in today's world. It recognizes that continuous career life development contributes to the success and well-being of not just individuals, but also of communities and society as a whole. And it helps students develop awareness of their personal strengths, their competencies, values, and passions, and how to use this self-knowledge to inform career life choices throughout their lives. We've created a really strong progression of uh, career-based learning from K to 12. And what you'll see at K to five is that it's really focused on developing foundations. So what that means to us is it's about expanding that sense of self, it's exposing students to positive community engagement, and it really is laying that foundation for reflection on learning and on goal setting. As we move into grades six to nine, this expands into exploring possibilities, providing students with opportunities to continue to reflect on, self-assess, and set goals in personal competency development. They're also exploring career life concepts that are really important, um, such as identity, leadership, personal planning, and transferable skills. Finally, they're exposed to increasingly diverse experiential learning opportunities and ways in which they can build support networks where family, mentors, and community can be a huge support to them in their career life development. So career education at the secondary years then shifts to students refining those personal career life development um, pieces, like the knowledge, the skills, the goals, and all of those things moving towards the application of personal career life management skills, allowing them to pursue who and how they want to be in the world. Some of the specifics within the secondary years um, that um, we'd like to point out to you is that the way we've oriented uh, the curriculum is such that we have eight credits that are dedicated to career education, and these are required for graduation. So you see these as career life education, which we call CLE, and career life connections, which we refer to as CLC. And you'll notice that these don't have a designated grade level. Each of them can be taken as a single four credit option or as two two credit options. All of this being able to en uh, enable greater flexibility for delivery. Students, they do receive final marks in both CLE and CLC, and this is consistent with all areas of learning within that graduation program. CLE was legislated for use July this year and is now available for um, this coming school year. And CLC is available for trial use, but will be implemented July 1, 2019. The other piece that we've recently introduced 
is a career ed guide for 10 to 12. This guide is really in response to questions about how secondary students can pursue their career life development in personally meaningful and goal-oriented ways. This is a new curriculum support resource for career education 10 to 12, and it's just been posted to our website earlier this summer. We provided the link for you um, on, on this particular slide and would really encourage you to check uh, this out if you haven't already done so. The guide is intended as an entry point for continued exploration and dialogue within school districts and amongst secondary school teams, really designed to support thoughtful implementation of the new Career Ed 10 to 12 curriculum. The guide, it has quite a few components and it can be used for varying purposes, um, such as determining some, some district resource allocation that you might be thinking about locally, informing and supporting innovative timetable creations, and offering suggestions for some learning approaches. More um, detailed information that elaborates on all of the pieces uh, that are in the guide. Again, these can be found on the ministry website. And I'll also note that we're seeking broad input, including uh, local school community examples and approaches, along with suggestions to be able to support implementation. I'm going to turn it over to Vivian for here. Thank you. Uh, before I, I continue here, I just want to point out that um, there's no need to really take notes during uh, this presentation because what's elaborated right now will be found in the guide, so you'll have that resource for you. Uh, developing the confidence, knowledge, and competencies necessary to succeed in an ever-changing world requires learning how to effectively manage one's own life journey while remaining open to multiple possible futures many of which have yet to be imagined. It entails going beyond thinking about one future goal, which is no longer viable, to considering multiple preferred futures. The career education curriculum is designed to enable the depth and breadth of self-discovery and career life management skills needed to inform choices about the emerging and shifting opportunities students face and will continue to face throughout their lives. This learning includes exploration of multiple life roles in educational, work-related, and personal life contexts, strategies for representing oneself publicly, interacting in diverse adult life contexts, and sustaining well-being, opportunities for experiential learning and community networking, reflection on learning experiences in school and out of school, and goal setting, self-assessment of core competency development, methods for organizing and maintaining authentic career life evidence, responsibility for incorporating inclusive practices and first people's perspectives and worldviews, and flexible planning for diverse post-graduation possibilities. For many students entering secondary school, career education may be the first structured opportunity to explore who and how they want to be in the world as young adults. The new curriculum is designed with this adolescent developmental stage in mind. Developing as confident and resilient young adults requires fulsome explorations and reflections about career life possibilities that assist in finding one's sense of purpose. Sense of purpose and hope for the future can be found where our interests and strengths overlap with opportunities that are available to us in our communities and in the world. Authentic career life questions like how do we pursue open-ended career life goals in a rapidly changing world? And how do we use our knowledge about balance among life roles to nurture our own well-being? are complex and require deeper exploration over time. When engaged in deeper learning opportunities on an ongoing basis, students can grapple with these and others of life's complex questions. Aligned with the big ideas of the secondary career education curriculum, 
Sample career life questions such as these are provided in the guide to help teachers connect students with key career life development themes. Teachers may find these questions helpful as starting points for designing deep for learning experiences, such as collaborative projects, inquiry-based learning experiences, exploratory investigations, and discussion groups. The core competencies, including communication, creative and critical thinking, personal and social, are today's employability and transferable skills for success in life. BC's curriculum has been designed so that students can develop these core competencies by doing the curricular competencies in all areas of learning, including all secondary level subject areas. Career education provides a structure for students to reflect and select demonstrations of learning that are personally meaningful to them. Ongoing reflection about learning experiences in class and outside of school and self-assessment of the core competency development can inform purposeful goal setting and planning for next steps. As students increasingly take on ownership of their lifelong learning journey and plan for post-graduation and adult life. Career education in the secondary years includes two offerings, career life education and career life connections. These offerings have been designed with a thoughtful progression of learning across the secondary years in mind. Although they have been engaging in career life development opportunities in their previous years of schooling, for many secondary students, it is in high school that they first begin wondering about who um, they will be as they enter into adulthood and what their hopes and opportunities could be in the adult world. This intentionally aligned learning progression encourages students to move from exploring various career life possibilities and practicing transferable employability skills in career life education to applying their refined self-knowledge and career life strategies to their own journeys and plans for post-graduation in career life connections. So for example, in CLE, the curriculum is designed so that students will examine their personal and public profiles, um, considering ways to represent self and how that might create um, their identity to the public, or they'll practice verbal communication skills and nonverbal communication skills and how to engage in respectful adult interactions. Then in CLC, uh, the curriculum has students creating and critiquing their own personal profiles and public profiles, and how would they like to represent who they will be in the world and who they are now. Additionally, they're encouraged to engage and actually apply um, respectful uh, interactions as they broaden and cultivate community networks as resources to them for post-graduation possibilities. Looking more specifically at career life connections, there are a couple of components that we're going to elaborate here and are elaborated in the guide. Career life exploration is an expectation for CLC. It refers to substantive experiential learning of 30 hours or more experience that is intended to expand or deepen student exposure to career life possibilities. Experiential learning is a process of engaging in and reflecting on direct experiences beyond traditional classroom settings. The career life exploration expectation for career life connections can take place within the school community as well as the broader community and is based on students' career life interests and learning needs. This experiential learning experience concludes a broad range of possibilities such as service learning, volunteerism, employment, fieldwork projects, entrepreneurship, and passion projects. 
The guide provides examples for school teams to consider as they look for creative ways to offer student career life exploration experiences. These examples are written as vignettes describing various types of student exploration choices and diverse ways to approach reflection. Another expectation for career life connections is the capstone. The capstone is a representation of a student's learning journey and provides an opportunity to reflect and synthesize as well as showcase and celebrate. It is a requirement for graduation. The capstone includes, but is not limited to, two stages. The self-assessment and critical analysis process is an opportunity for students to take stock of where they are in their learning journey as they approach graduation. Students reflect on their competency development and identify key insights about their learning journey, past, present, and possible futures, drawing from their learning experiences and accomplishments from multiple areas learning at school and in other contexts, career life development of conversations with their mentor, collected demonstrations of authentic career life evidence, reflections about career, uh, sorry, core competency development, career life exploration experiences, assignments, peer collaborations, inquiry learning, and so on from their coursework. Secondly, the capstone is representation and presentation, an opportunity for students to showcase their strengths, passions, and learning journey to a relevant audience. Intended as a celebration of their learning, students are encouraged to share successes both in school and out of school, including their reflections on core competency development, their contributions and aspirations, and their post-graduation plans. The capstone can take on many different forms, depending on student needs and interests and opportunities available in local school communities. In the guide, several pages are dedicated to ideas for capstone. And as you can see in this graphic here, they're set up so that you can see descriptions of these stages on the left hand side and then there's considerations for educators on the right hand side for thoughtful implementation. Additionally, several pages are have been allotted to capstone criteria. It is important to consider common rigorous learning criteria as well as criteria that aligns with uh, specific formats selected by students for capstone. Co-construction of criteria with students is one way to encourage ownership of learning and confirm understanding of expectations. These criteria listed here are found in the guide and represent learning rigor in a general way. Teachers may find these helpful as a starting point for capstone preparation and assessment conversations with their students. Additionally, in the guide, you'll find example ideas for how to develop criteria for specific capstone presentation formats. For example, for those students who are interested in pursuing a format related to storytelling, you may decide as a school community to invite in uh, a local First Nations uh, storyteller to help you with designing criteria with your students and then using that criteria to help assess and also perhaps invite the community to give feedback to students about how they, how they did with their capstone. Specific criteria in this case could include proficient use of voice, facial expression and body language, intonation, use of imagery, etc. Additionally, for students who are interested in pursuing academic pursuits, there's an example provided on how that might look and how you might engage post-secondary in institutions within co-creating criteria. The third example in the guide 
speaks to those kids who have decided that they would like to choose a trades program for their future plans. And they may decide to create a product that represents their learning in capstone to demonstrate their creativity, manual dexterity, and technical expertise. Again, engaging a tradesperson or the industry, in other words, the broader community and co-creation of criteria may be helpful. Pursuing career life development with intent is fostered through ongoing mentorship from someone who knows you well. Ideally, a mentor cultivates relationships with a cohort of students across their secondary years with dedicated time that enables purposeful career life development and meaningful planning for post-graduation. The Career Education Guide provides suggestions on how mentors can play an important role in supporting and developing confident students who have a strong sense of who they are, what they can contribute, and what their next adventures after graduation will be. Also in the guide, you'll find many examples of delivery models. School districts and school teams are exploring ways to offer career education so that students can pursue career life development with more depth and breadth and under the guidance of a mentor across their secondary years. This may mean, for example, reconsidering traditional secondary school structures like timetables and how we use blocks of time. In the guide, there are guiding questions and delivery model examples provided for school teams as starting points to inform these implementation discussions and to spark ideas. So we've reached the end of the slides that we've uh, prepared for you today. Um, before we say goodbye, um, we just want to mention that we really look forward to continued engagement with school districts about career education. We hope that this will be an ongoing conversation um, in which we invite you to share your thoughts with us, including what would be helpful about the guide and suggestions to be able to support implementation. We welcome your feedback and we've provided the address at which you can leave that for us. So thank you so much uh, for, for talking with us today and we'll turn it back over to Kevin if you have some questions for us. Thank you, Vivian and Angie. So much appreciated and I uh, appreciate that link. And as I said, I will uh, post this um, online early next week. Um, I did have a couple of questions and as you might guess, um, really helpful information. Um, the question tend to be in terms of uh, implementation pieces and timetabling pieces. And so um, just a couple of questions that I'll pull out. And I do encourage our participants, I'm still monitoring the question box. We do have some time and I'll pitch some questions for them. So um, the first question, is it possible to get a course code for CLC this year as well? And the feeling is it's, it's a bit challenging uh, to pilot a new program and yet code it to the old curriculum. So is that coming to the field anytime soon? So I'm happy to respond to that one. Um, unfortunately, we're in that transition year in which we have to ask school districts to use existing course codes, even if they are trialing out CLC this year. Um, we, we know that this creates some headaches for you and we appreciate your um, flexibility with us on this. Sure. Uh, second question, just wondering about the funding for this. So would they be the same for CLC and CLE and Capstone, um, but are they considered sort of three separate courses from a funding perspective? No, these are eight credits. Um, so if you were, trying to separate them, we would call them two courses, but we really have uh, tried very hard to not refer to them as courses because we want to be able to encourage that flexible delivery model. Okay, and for our, our kids going into grade 12 this year, they'll graduate in 29. Um, are they going to, is it going to be a requirement? Um, will they require CLE with the two credits as a part of their graduation? 
Can I have that one one more time? Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Just what are the just what are the expectations for um, for our, our kids going into grade 12? So um, the, I think the question is, um, will they be required to take CLA, the two credit course? Uh, so I can answer graduate? that question. So sure. to graduate, you can graduate with either Planning 10 or CLE. So in this case, uh, they would have Planning 10. Okay. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so all grade 10 to 12 courses are currently four credits. So the question is, uh, how do school leaders tie two credits for CLE to a course without going over the teaching assignment load for a teacher? So this is a contractual piece. I think that one's a really good question. Um, I don't know that we have a response for you at this point. We do know that um, being able to move in a different direction in career education, specifically at 10 to 12, is going to take, um, I think, some innovative thinking, both from the ministry and in partnership with school districts. So if there are thoughts on uh, how to be able to best address this, we would be really open to hearing those. And uh, we certainly, we don't have all the answers as yet, but we, um, again, we want to have that open dialogue to be able to sort through the, the problems collaboratively. Sure. Um, so this year's grade tens, uh, I'm just looking, you know, in these kind of system-wide changes, the transition sometimes can be a little bit tricky. So this yeah, year's yeah. current grade tens are taking CLE, but the grade 11s are not. Um, so moving forward, will the current grade 11s do grad transition next year, or will they need to do sort of CLE capstone in their grade 12 year? Um they can, so all students can graduate with any combination of planning 10 or CLE and GT or CLC. I see. Um, but next year, CLC is the course that's offered, not GT. Does that right. make sense for your question? I think so. I hope it does. The person who wanted me to ask that again, my experience is elementary and middle, so I, I defer to sort of the experience of our secondary people who are online with us right now. So just okay. a confirmation piece. And so for a number of our principals and vice principals who say work, uh, also work with adult grads, um, so wanted to confirm that both CLE and CLC could be applied to an adult graduation program? Yes. That's correct. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so uh, again, uh, we're getting lots of questions. Uh, further on course code, CLA will still be coded as a grade 10 course, is that correct? And um, is it possible for a school to drop the grade designation just to further encourage flexibility in terms of their, I would assume their staffing and timetabling issues? Uh, the course codes, the only reason they have a grade attached to them is because that's the way the system has been structured, the technology. Right. Uh, we have no way of changing that. Um, but the reality is all of both CLE and CLC are not grades level specific and should be offered at times that work best for students and local communities. Yeah. Um, to, to, so, sorry, I'm just uh, scrolling through our questions. We have lots of, uh, uh, probably a time for a couple more questions. Um, so, for those kids who are on an evergreen pathway, is it a requirement for them to uh, do the CLC? I, they, are you talking about students on a modified program? Uh, to a degree, yeah. Yeah, so it, what I would say is that, you know, as with any course credit, the same applies for CLC. However, a lots of the uh, learning that's done in CLC is applicable to students on modified programs as well. So I would encourage that they also be included in those activities. Um, so, uh, again, a logistics piece. Um, thank you for the confirmation about the adult grad program. Um, will there be a CLE 12 code eventually for adult grads? I believe there is one already. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
so I think I have time for one more question. I'm just scrolling through the chat. Thank you for your uh, patience. Um, uh, for, well, actually, um, at, perhaps there are some final comments you might want to make, and I will see if there's one more, if we have time for one more question. Uh, well, this is Vivian again. Uh, this is part of the reason that we feel that continuous dialogue is important because there are quite a few things to still figure out. Um, and that includes local contexts have different ways of approaching this and different challenges that are they're facing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no easy answer to this complex question, I guess, of how we do career life development in a way that works for, for our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think we have time for one final question. And I know, um, and I really encourage our participants to reach out to you directly. It seems there's lots of questions in terms of implementation. Um, CLE is listed as a grade 10 course, so there's two parts to this question. Can a student take both CLE 10 and CLE? E CLC 12 and use both towards adult grad or is it just using one of those two courses um, but I think you may have touched on that already I'm not as familiar with the adult grad program but okay. that's a question we can find out the answer for sure for sure. people sure um, with that um, uh, Vivian Angie I, I know that our, our people uh, need to get on with their days it's the very busy days for them in terms of uh, of getting their schools ready for next week so I'm going to bring our webinar to a close I do know that there um, I've been monitoring the question box and copying and pasting lots of questions my apologies that we couldn't get to all of the questions um, I will do my best to uh, transcribe those pieces and send those off to you but again of course um, um, I, I want to emphasize your closing comment in that um, you are certainly willing to uh, connect with school leaders and our other guests who are online with us today to really get some feedback about um, the implementation piece of it. Um, I absolutely think from a school leader perspective, um, understand the vision and the philosophy and the necessity of uh, making some changes to career education. Um, now the challenge will be about how do we implement that in, in a meaningful way and ensure that students are getting the most out of it. So uh, with that, I'm going to bring our webinar to a close. Thank you very much for all of our participants for joining us today. Mm -hmm.